Yeah, we're live streaming. What's up, everyone? We're back. It's been a week. It's been a great Whee! week, actually. I, I've had a really good time since the last time we filmed. Guys? Yeah, I'm going to say I had a pretty good time to myself. Uh, enjoyed the weekend. Enjoyed everything that life threw at me, you know? That's good. It's been amazing. Yeah, it's been a really good week. Um, work's been good. Life has been good. Um, I can't complain. I mean, who am I going to complain to anyway, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, what, what was that, Walter? Tell them your greatest your achievement at work, your recent achievement. Oh, yeah. Snap. Uh, so uh, I work at the airport, and I got nominated for uh station security officer and i got the position so yeah that's, cool, that's, cool. that's great yeah, good things man good things good things awesome and uh i hear that somebody had a birthday last week you don't want to hear me <laughs> no, i'm terrible <laughs> Eric and I both had a birthday last week. Mine was on October 3rd, and it was fun because I was in Mexico, and it was more of a spontaneous thing. I wasn't really planning on going because on Tuesday, that Tuesday, I think it was uh, September 29th, and I called because my grandpa turned 90th. I think I mentioned it in the last video, and uh, my aunts are all like, you should come, you should come, you know, your cousin's coming tomorrow driving, like, what are, like, what do you have to lose? I was like, well, my job, you know, <laughs> 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 and they're like, oh, you don't worry about that, you know, everything's gonna be fine, and I was like, man, I don't know, like, fuck it, you know, so I messaged my supervisor, I was like, hey, like, I was gonna make up some lie, too, I was like, I was like, hey, I have a family emergency. Like, I wanted to, like, make up, like, the, like, worst case scenario. But then I was like, no, nah, like, what if that actually happened? So I was like, she's like, I was like, hey, I have, like, a family event that I would really want to be a part of. I'm just wondering if you give me the opportunity to go. Like, I'll do whatever you need me to do before and after I, co like, go and come back. And then she's like, well, what's the occasion? And I was like, my grandpa's turning 90, 90 you know, and it's his 90th birthday. Um and you know like that's like a big milestone in life you know and yeah it was like the greatest time ever probably the best experience i ever had in mexico with my family because like all my aunts and uncles like from my dad's side like their my grandparents kids were all there like they're like my aunts and uncles and it was just a lot of fun it was a really good time and i think i've laughed more when like this time that i went with them than I ever have before, so it was cool. And I also saw my parents, my mom and dad. I haven't seen them since Thanksgiving, so it was really cool. Oh, that's, awesome. that's a that's good awesome. thing. Yeah, it's always good to have family time, and also, but also have like your boundaries too with like, with family, you know. But when you are together, it's a fucking blast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. And, and I got to spend my birthday out there on Saturday. And uh, one of my uncles, one of my dad's brothers, we share a birthday. So they threw us a big birthday party. So it was a lot of fun. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it was and good. I saw it in a car race or what was that that you were doing? Or you like, oh, were you like, yeah. you like no, so, what's going on there? I don't know. Like, so we're driving, right? And it's like, it was already like driving at night to Laredo is already kind of like scary. Like, like, yeah. you know, it, like, you have a feeling like, all right, nothing's going to happen, but what? You're on the other side. You're on Nuevo Laredo, too, right? Yeah. No, no, well, we were going, we came from a different part. So Laredo's, like, right here. And then we, like, like uh -huh. went, went east from it to enter another side. Um, but that road, I guess, um, like, it, they have special events on that because, they were having drag races and there was cops there like ensuring that it was like nothing happened, you know, like, so that was kind of cool <laughs> because, like, our, our way home, it was just experience after experience after experience. Um, what, what happened? Uh, yeah, no, that, that was probably the one, like the main highlight that really stuck with me. So 
That was cool. <laughs> that. Yeah, we got to see like two cars race. And then they let people go through, you know, and then like, hey, you know, we're going to stop traffic. We're going to have another race. And we're like, all right, fuck it. And yeah, so we got to see like three car, three car races. And then I was just joking around. I was like, hey, man, we're next. We're next. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably squeeze that in here somehow. I'll, I'll wait for tomorrow. I think he's going to That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it's been fun, and, uh, and today was really fun, too. Um, I went to the bookstore, bought some more books. <laughs> nice. It's always fun. Yeah. Uh, I have to – I actually – they're like, do you want a membership? I was like – Whoa, there's a book membership? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so at Barnes & Noble, and they're, cause they're like, do you want a membership? I was like, you know what? I probably should get one. Hey. Like, I've, been, I've been wasting a lot of money here. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah. it's they're not, like, not wasted. It's invested. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, 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 that's true. You're, you're, right you're, away. Your knowledge, man, in that cream. <laughs> I got four books. Yeah. That was cool. That's always fun. They're like, dude, you spent a lot of money here. Do you want a membership? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm gonna hook you up, man. You, you yeah. seem like you you're gonna come here a lot more. <laughs> I guess um like she's she's seen something on the computer. She's like, you want a membership? Cause you know you were here like two months ago. I was like, yeah, yeah, I probably should. Is there like a friends and family dealer that you get it with it? Or? <laughs> well, they said anyone anyone who knows my phone number could use it. Oh. Yeah. So guys, okay. back to get a uh, flurry of texts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you guys are going to share their phone number on this. Go use this Barnes and Noble. <laughs> oh, fuck wild, man. And you reap all the benefits because it's like, hey, you, you bought a hundred books this month. Uh, here's a hundred dollar gift certificate or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, she was telling me like from the top of her head, she's like, oh, you'll get this, you get this. 20% off this day. Sometimes we'll have like membership day only where you'll get like 40% off a book. I was like, God, damn, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a she, deal. Yeah, yeah, it is. And she's like, and the Starbucks, you're always going to get 20% off. I was like, that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you had me. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at Starbucks last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where they got you, man. Uh, but yeah, man. I mean, I I could keep on talking about like how great this week's been. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. This week's been really great. Um, but uh, yeah, let's go on. Uh, you guys want to talk about uh, today's topic? Today's yeah. topic. Yes. What was it? Refresh my memory, Eric. Uh, well, you were talking about one thing about that, how you went over to your family uh, in Mexico, and all you had was laughing or laughter. So that you know, you're always laughing. That's kind of touches my topic, which is the throat chakra, the fifth uh, chakra. Uh, that's one of the things that I actually kind of tell you to do is to find yourself in a very positive, you know, environment. And what's more positive than, you know, like laughing, you know, yeah. and having a good time. Uh, of course, the throat chakra is in the throat. Um, color is kind of like a light blue, like a aqua kind of color it's not actual blue blue but uh yeah um and the uh the element is sound if you would end up getting i guess that you know uh pretty much the meaning is a purification uh like a spe special pure especially pure um it's pretty much functions are communication creative uh Ether, sound, vibration, and some mantras. The mantra would be, uh, I'll just wait so you can write this down. <laughs> it's hum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's, that's hum. It's that's like the easiest. That well, one of the easiest, and then uh, as like the the chakras go, and then I like that the heart chakra is yum. <laughs> But yeah, this is like super easy. It's easy to 
I didn't even realize that. I was just, I was meditating earlier at like eight o'clock our time. And yeah, I was just hum. Yeah, it's the vibration, you know, kind of like the, in your throat area kind of helps you open up that uh, chakra, try to balance it. Um, uh, another good way is like, oh, I'll say, I'll keep this one for later though. Um, well, a few little things you can kind of notice that you're uh, not balanced uh, in your throat chakra would be that um, you're kind of shy, weak, uh, weak voice, fear of speaking, unable to listen, lying most of the time, uh, aggression, and uh, throat problems sometimes occur. Um, that's a good way of kind of knowing if you're not balanced. Uh, and then for balancing, it's kind of like peaceful, truthful, you're good listening, you're good communication, uh, giving or good at communicating, uh, and a strong self expression. Yeah, uh, a... go ahead, sorry. Oh no, yeah, I think that's a really important tip is just like is just learning to express yourself and just being truthful and honest with yourself. Um, because I mean, if you can't be truthful and honest with yourself, what makes you think that you can be honest with everybody around you? You know, you got to start with, like we always talk about, you got to start with yourself first. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I can relate with that. Um, I don't know why after high school, I think I wasn't really happy with everything, how, what went with my life after high school. Um, Cause I, and it's funny because I think I was thinking about this today too. I had, I w we made it to state for track and field and I got suspended like on the last three days before we had to go. Oh, shame on you. Well, it wasn't, I'm not, you know what? I was there, so it happened. It was me, I guess. Um, yeah, you happened, man. Your, your silence. <laughs> so, so, so what, I'm not going to really like give out the whole story. Uh, what happened but they saw me in the cameras with my camera and the whole thing that I had my camera out was because I was filming that school year and made like a montage video for the, all the seniors right and for those who are watching they're asking what the hell happened to the senior video I deleted it because I was like fuck these people kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry for like thinking like that because that's how it felt at the time so that's just me being honest with everyone right now um I am a little disappointed about it though that I did delete it because I have lost all those videos and it was a, it should I, I was being selfish in a way because I was thinking about my cell phone and not about everyone else. So again, I apologize for those who are, are watching that. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking about yeah, this. I, your word, man. You weren't keeping your word. You videotaped it and then you deleted it. Well, I made it. I had it on YouTube for like three years, I think. And then I was like, you know what? Like, kind of attitude. Uh, but after high school, like, I, like, I didn't go to state, like they invited me, like the coaches, like they're like, hey, you know, you can still go with the, oh, we lost Eric. Oh no, he'll come back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just continue. Um, so yeah, the coach is like, hey, you know, you can still go with us and everything. But I felt that I had already failed. That I was like, no, I'm not worthy of going. So I'm, I'm actually kind of proud yeah. of that. Yeah, because you were your biggest, uh... You're your biggest critic. So I'm actually proud that I didn't go because I really felt like I didn't deserve it because of that um, incident that happened. I don't regret that. Uh, but after high school, I did start like saying lies that I was going to this university when I really wasn't. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I guess, I, I guess it was just to create this persona that, oh, Remy was doing good. Remy was... Uh, you know, and then, and then I always knew that I was lying and I always felt like I was lying and then people would test me too. So I had to like make all these stories that it sounded like, you ever watched The Great Gatsby with Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. Where he's like, where Tom, uh, Tobey Maguire is all like, 
his story was like so like vivid and descriptive that people no wonder people thought he was lying like i really felt like i like i related to that part when uh he said that i was like holy shit dude that's how my story was when i like was out of high school i was telling people i went to the university i, I got i left it i would start working here and then now i don't know bro it was really messy and it was really chaotic what does eric say what happened uh, what happened <laughs> We lost you, cuz. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, and I guess I mean that—that's uh, that was another big thing for me too. Is I really had a, a trouble as a, growing up with uh, with my self esteem, because um, just because I was, I don't know. You want to be noticed, but then again, the stuff that you like, uh, you really don't want to tell people that you like, because then you, you they'll think that you're not that cool or whatever, and then. In the end, like I, I, in the end, like what really saved me, I think, was punk music because, like, <laughs> it was, they were, punks really accepted me for who the fuck I was. I was just like, all right, well, cool, like, I can do whatever the hell I want to and still be me, you know, yeah. and people will accept me for it, you know. Uh, yeah, once in a while you'll get somebody that that rags on you, but that's just, that's just uh, they hate us because they ain't us, man. They hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. So that's why I started doing it. And I, I really, I really didn't like how it was making me feel. Eric, can you hear us? Yeah, it's a bit laggy. I think it's my internet. All right, we're back. Though. Uh, but, uh, I'm back. So I'm back at yeah. trying to kill me. I was just, right. I, I just um, told them, we, like, after my high school experience, like, the lie I would say to people about, like, the university I used to go to that I never went to, and just, I don't know, it really didn't align with me, but I really, like, already had created this character that, oh, no, you went to this school, this is what you did, kind of thing, uh, and when I started, like, doing myself growing, you know, I tell people now the truth. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I went to a community college for a couple of years, and I was like, fuck it, I don't want to do this. This is not for me, kind of thing, right. you know. I did my best. I, I was studying, uh, I, I think it was human hu human anatomy, and I was, like, really, like, zeroed in, you know. I, like, even popped a lot of Adderall one time, my, my little brother's just to study, and I studied for, like, 10 hours, and I still fucking got a D in that class. I was like, fuck this. This is not worth it. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some things are just not real health, man. Like, why am I going to stress myself over something that is, like, it's either in the cards or it's not, you know? <laughs> yeah. But with everything that Eric had mentioned already, I did have this statement from this book that I was reading. And because uh, you, men you mentioned like negative emotions are like speaking, right? Um, I, I was reading this and I really felt like it lined up. It says here, when any negative emotion presents itself in one's mind, it can be transmuted into a positive or constructive emotion by a simple procedure of changing one's thoughts. I thought, I thought that was really cool because... Um, like why lie you know this is like that's what i got out of it like why lie about it like when i asked my supervisor if i could go i wanted to lie but i was like you know what like i'm gonna tell her the truth like i'm gonna go to see my grandpa because he's turning 90. And exactly she, i mean what lie would have you said is like uh like yeah like it would have been the most so much, much more to come up with the lie than to just tell the truth <laughs> and uh yeah, and then she's like, yeah, don't worry. Secretness. She's like, don't worry about it. Go, you enjoy your time. I'm going to take care of everything. And when you come back, just punch in like ever. And then uh, if you lose your job, I'll let you know. But if not, you just keep working. I was like, all right, cool. And yeah, I've been working. <laughs> yeah, and I think that uh, I can that um, with my situation of uh, being on, uh, on the GPS monitor and um, – just going through those things and telling my 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 job and i remember when it first happened i had to tell jimmy hey um i was in jail like and like you know you want the job because 
you know, you still need a job and you're being honest with me. And, and, and with the change in management and everything, to uh, station manager, he was in the trench with me, uh, uh, Ram. And uh, so he's, he, he understood too uh, the situation and they've been really, uh, they've been really understanding with, with uh, my, my, con my situation, with my legal situation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it does get in the way uh, sometimes just because I would like to stay and work more shifts uh, when the opportunity does arise um, because um, sometimes we'll be missing uh, somebody or, you know, they'll ask, hey, you know, uh, can you stay and give us an extra hand? And I, you know, I have to decline because I haven't spent that time up with, with my officer, you know. Um, but yeah, there's a, they're, they're really, they're really good with me. They're, and I like that uh, just being, yeah, like you said, just being honest and truthful. Um, truth, justice, and the American way, like, man. <laughs> Well, I don't know if it's the American way. The, I, I'd like to think that truth and justice is the American way, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I think the people way, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm that, yeah. Eric? <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, I, I completely agree with you guys. Like, why, you know, say a lie, you know, like, it's going to make, you kind of have to work yourself because uh, um, when I was a little kid, I, I was a liar a lot. I liked to lie for just for fun. You know, like, I actually, like, enjoyed lying to people. Uh, don't know the reason why. But um, one of the things that I caught myself like doing is like always remembering what I said to try to you know convince them what I said. And there would be times when I'm just like, why did I why why did I lie? Well, why why did I say this? Yeah. And I have to remember these different stories. To, and then uh, it's just like you know what? Now I want to stop lying. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then it's like you you tell these stories to people and then they're putting your story out there and then somebody else is telling that story and then you're like, did it happen like that? Or didn't it happen like that? And you, like you say, you, you get caught up in the lie. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> it totally wasn't me. I didn't do that. <laughs> but what, I, I'm gonna quote on my bed. I, I, yeah, I read a quote and it's exactly what you guys just said. He's like, just tell the truth because then you have to remember all the lies that you've told to people. So why, try, like, why, why suffer yourself like that when the truth has just one story? Yeah. Yeah. I butchered it, but yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not. That's not right. <laughs> Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah, you're good. Uh, I also read somewhere that um, just having your your throat chakra uh, blocked is like like you have a like a, you get like a rasp like if you ever had like a raspiness in your voice or just like like or like a hoarseness or like um, like they they even associate it with like laryngitis and um, and like thyroid problems too um, uh, neck pains like if you ever get neck pains too I'm pretty sure we all get neck pains but that's that's just from wearing a heavy crown, man. <laughs> heavy wears the crown. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I think, I don't know. How, how, how can we, is there any more healing tips that we can do as far as like balancing that chakra? Uh, there's a few that I found. Uh, one is always, you know, meditating, you know, that's pretty much how, you know, you, you open any of your chakras is by meditating, sitting down in silence and coming in with your own, you know, feelings and emotions and thoughts. Uh, that's one way. Uh, and I have it here written, uh, written down, like, um, to just do the, the, 
the home sound for like a good like five minutes if you're a beginner a little more you know you start kind of uh feeling that you're you could do more than just five minutes and you start you know breaking up your times a little more and more uh another one is eating healthy it's always good you know they do say your body is your temple you know always feed good things to your body and you'll feel good yeah. and the other one is exercising um there's a, a, i'm not sure i don't remember but i remember that one of the uh episodes I was talking about that I always buy a lot of books and I forget to read them well I found this book in the pile kind of talks about the chakras and stuff and it, it gives it kind of gives you a real good detail of things so I was reading about the third chakra and so one of the exercises here that says is play charades um okay in a way like in a way you're just kind of like you know trying to kind of guess uh, in a way with the other persons you know trying to say without even saying any words so kind of like uh, telepathic almost uh, kind of learning how to do that and the other one's uh, voice recording kind of the same thing as journaling I would say um, you kind of just you know in your own thoughts emotions and just writing them down or recording them um, so that's pretty much yourself expressing your true pure thoughts in a way so even though you're not actually like saying anything you're actually saying it in paper and uh there's other ones too like uh neck roll which kind of like uh like you were saying like neck pains and stuff it's kind of like rolling it and then this direction like this and then uh counterclockwise and there's like the head lifting there's there's a good, uh, like, a few things I can show you here. I haven't read the whole thing. Uh, one of my lists to do is to start reading this thing because I literally didn't even remember I had it. <laughs> you know what really works for me, too, is singing, man. I don't know if you guys sing or if you guys like to sing or just like music in general. But for me, just like to express myself, I like to sing. Like, it's just like one of my things that I like to do and it, it, it'll be just anything like it'll be just any melody that pops into my head like earlier uh, I heard um whatever is playing in the background and I was like da, 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 da. like in my head I was just and I felt it in my voice and I wanted to start singing it and I was like man Celia Cruz is in the house tonight bro so yeah that's a great song that you were playing too whatever whoever is playing that in the background like thank you so much that's that's an awesome song it's like because um, the message in that song is like, people think that life is about um, stuff and things and like, you know, material. Uh, but in reality, it's just, you know, it's, it's, the, it's what we're doing right now. It's, it's love, it's communication. It's, you know, we're, we're uh, experiencing one another. Wow, I think I just went into a Rick and Morty episode. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that is like, it's true though, like some of the stuff that you see on, on, on TV and like I've, and I've, I've started to connect with a lot of the things that we've been reading to and you just see the, uh, you just start seeing the Fibonacci sequence and everything now. <laughs> I just got a message guys, I'm trying to do this upgrade. It says uh, we have eight minutes remaining, I don't know why we usually could knock out two hours so I'm really confused. But, uh, I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what are the things with this chakra from what I'm able to like what I was able to see of it or learn of it <clears throat> is like I guess don't regret what you're saying in a way yeah like stay true to your word yeah um, and that's one thing that I think people kind of get offended with me because sometimes I'm very blunt, but I'm honest. And I tell them this. And I was like, well, they're like, your words hurt. I'm like, but I'm not lying. Like, you know, <laughs> is that, is that yeah. with something wrong or like, like, cause I'm not, I'm not the type of person, I'm the type of person that I don't like participation medals. If you give a kid a participation medal, I want to slap you, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I want to slap you and tell your kid, like, no, you fucking lost kind of thing, you know? Like, and I'm trying to work on that, but, like, what do you suggest as far as that goes? Like, I don't think I'm wrong for it. <laughs> yeah, but that's one thing you kind of have to remember is that sometimes your truth can actually hurt someone else. So sometimes you kind of, I kind of saw this, like, a, a meme that says that before you say anything, go through these three gates. Um, it was, if it's true, oh, I can't really remember. But the, pretty much it's like you kind of have to visualize what you say before you say it. Because sometimes, like, some people can take it the wrong way yeah. and yeah. get offended by it. Yeah, just because it's true doesn't mean, like, I don't know. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, in a sense. Like, like I like with my like uh, with this new role that I have at, at my work, it's difficult to like making people safe. Like, you can only say so much b before like you start to like feel overwhelmed because you like you can tell these people so much to do like to stay safe and keep these 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 procedures in mind. But in the end, it's like ultimately up to that person. And I always tell people, you decide your own level of involvement. And that's been, that's, that's stuck with me for a long time. And, and, and yeah, like if you get in and yeah, the more involved you are, the, I think the more, uh, the more happier you, you will be. The more effort, like, like I said, the more effort you put into it, the happier you'll be. In my opinion. <laughs> Um, but I mean, as far as it goes, because I, sometimes I say things, and I'm, I'm sorry, like, to, like, be, like, kind of, I guess, self-centered at the moment, but I don't even really mean to, like, offend people. I just say it because it's, I'm just, like, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, sometimes I just really want to yell at people and tell them they're idiots, but I can't. <laughs> um just because, and, and that's just, and I think that's another lesson in patience for, for all of us, you know, just, you know, we, everybody is, is working to their own capabilities. And, you know, some people are up here, some people are down here, and some people are in between, you know, and we just all are doing the best that we can with what we got, you know, some people know a little bit more, some people uh, know a little bit less. And, you know, those people that know a little bit less, we just got to teach them and be more patient as uh, as guide as guidance counselors and teachers and um, you know people who are seekers in the way of the path. Okay. True. I'm trying to do this, guys. I'm sorry. Well, thank you for understanding. I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> this is a, a sense of timing. I think that was another key characteristic too to the to the third chakra is just uh, just having a sense of timing. I don't know if you guys have ever felt that, where like uh, like when you uh, how can I put this as an example? I guess yeah. With I guess with the job opportunity too, like I've been wanting a raise and I've been wanting to ask for a raise and all of a sudden this opportunity gets dropped into my lap and it's kind of like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's some good timing. Like it was coming around the corner. I felt, I guess I felt it in my, in my bones, in my gut, in my, in my soul that uh, something was going to change at work. And yeah, uh, that's like, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> are you referring kind of, from what I'm getting of the law of attraction in a way? Uh, either that, like either laws of attraction or even like almost like premonitions uh, where where you feel, um, uh, well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, a little bit of everything. Like I felt like I was, like something was, I felt in myself that I, that I was doing a, a good job and that I deserved um, a better pay, pay cut. And so, and then uh, when my boss told me about the, the opportunity, 
um, I think he told me about a week ago. Um, I was like, well, no, he told me like two weeks ago. And then last week is when they appointed me the, uh, the safety officer. Um, but yeah, I was, I was excited and I felt like I was, I was going to get it. But at the same time, he was hinting that it was like, uh, still up in the air. But yeah, it was it was almost like a, a premonition, and like you say, maybe even a, a, the law of attraction of wanting to have a better opportunity at work and also better pay, and then it actually happening. Good. Yeah. I um the reason I went to uh, the can you guys see me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the reason I went to. The bookstore today was because I was actually talking on the phone with this girl uh, at work here, you know, doing my job. And and out of nowhere, she's just like, what books have you read? And I was like, oh, shit, dude, this is about to be one of the best conversations. And uh, I, I told her, <laughs> I like, I'm currently reading this book and this book and this book. And then she's like, oh, my gosh, like, I've been wanting to read that book. I was like, well, what, what books have you read? And she's like, I've been doing a lot of reading this year, and this is the books I recommend. Uh, one of them was called The Millionaire, the Millionaire Next Door and Don't Split the Difference. And then she also mentioned How Rich People Think. I got two of those ones that she mentioned. Uh, so, like, and it's crazy because I kind of have been wanting, like, more books regarding like how to think differently and like the one that she mentioned like how unlimited cosmic power so we got cut off and i was talking about the bookstore <laughs> and i got three four books today and it was a lot of fun because also i talked to this woman at the bookstore and she was recommending me some books as far as like self-growing goes to um she said David Ramsey and when I went to Barnes and because I went to half book price or half bookstore or they sell the books half like they're used books so I got a few there and then she's like David Ramsey you gotta look him up and I was all right cool so when I went to Barnes and Noble to go get the other books this guy's face was just everywhere and I was like this is a fucking sign so I grabbed his book and yeah but yeah that was that <laughs> is he related to the chef Ramsey? Chef Ramsey? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't studied them just yet. But. I was gonna say because yeah, then you got the two extremes. Like one's like super meditative, and the other was just like explosive. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as this chakra goes, because I know we mentioned it, like. Uh, kind of like be careful, not be careful, but make sure that you're telling the truth and uh, just speaking from the heart. Oh, I don't think we kind of really cover that. Did we like, like speak from the heart? Well, yeah, that's uh, one of the things that they say the throat chakra is, is like the gate between the, the heart and the, uh, the third eye. So it kind of like with your, with your mind. Yeah. Like, so it's like the, the center, the center of the gate of like from your higher being into the being you are yep right in the throat but honestly yeah yeah that's insane when i read about that it was like oh i read some somewhere where it said that if like okay. uh, going back to like speaking from the heart that they say that if your heart chakra is blocked that like you can't have anything go up or down so it's like if you if that if that's blocked then you really can't like say anything. Speak. And it, and it made, yeah, and it made me think of that one line in um, in Jerry Maguire where he goes back to his mentor. He's like, "If this don't work, this doesn't matter." <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, and, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, and um, and it goes back to like like the esoteric and just like. Um, the Buddhism and just an, and and uh, Hinduism, and when they would always say like, my mind my mind hurts, they would point to their chest, and so because it's their, it's the heart mind, uh, because you do have to say 
what comes from your heart and be honest with with yourself and the ones that are around you um um yeah so yeah when your heart hurts your mind hurts i guess um and you can really die of, of a heart of a heart broken heart you know it's happened i've seen it no, i haven't seen it but <laughs> but i'm pretty sure we can all uh, relate king kong the king kong yeah oh that's yeah, right a broken heart yeah you did die of a broken heart bro oh that's right that's deep <laughs> um so lately okay so when i was stating how i used to do, like kind of be very blunt on my words i don't really feel like i've done that often i i want to say i have i have been better at it uh but now it's more of uh, me talking to people and i feel like for example <clears throat> i'm not going to say who it was but i was talking to someone today and I was like, you know, you should try to really start doing this into your life and start doing like applying this because I've seen the way you act uh, towards this person and it's very negative. And, and, and that person that I was telling this to. Somebody's popular. The person I was telling this to, they're like, you're just throwing that in my face kind of thing. And I was like, I'm not like, like. Uh -oh. you, you hurt their ego, bro. You hurt their ego. <laughs> Nobody wants to be told what they're doing wrong. <laughs> it sucks. <Yeah. laughs> but then yeah. they'll they'll figure it out. Like it, it's gonna sink in, and they'll figure it out. I was like, wow. And I remember, I am being an asshole. I mean, maybe he's not being an asshole, or they're not being an asshole. But you know, they, but they'll figure it out. It's like, man. And I told him, I was like, I was like, you're being a dick, and this is the. I was like, and I straight up went to, because I'm very close to this person, so I was like very comfortable with telling them straight up. I was like, you're being a dick to this person. And I'm going to tell you, for me personally, I'm able to tell you this because I was a dick to this person as well. But I can guarantee you I, that I was meaner to this person than you are. And I'm telling you from now looking in from, looking in from the outside that you're going to regret everything, you're, how you're treating this person. So I was like, it's, so it's better now to, to work on what I'm telling you and don't be mean to this person. And they're, yeah, like I said, they're, they're just like, whatever, man, whatever, you know, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hang up now, right? Because I don't want to talk to you anymore. And I was just like, I was like it's not about, it's not about <laughs> me, like, trying to help you. And I hope that one day you can see this and yeah. <laughs> you, it, hey man, you know, and like, I mean, I could relate because if someone would have told me this back when I was barely starting off, or not even like on that path, I would have flipped. I know when my mom, like my mom, my parents, they they they, they let me borrow money when I was growing up, and my mom would sometimes ask me, she say, "Hey, dude, you know, I really need this money. Do you have it?" And I was like, why the hell are you bothering me about the damn money, you know? Mm. And I hate the fact that I, that's, like, how I would react. Like, now I'm always asking, I was like, Mom, hey, you guys need help? Like, I could assist you. So, like, I've, I've learned the ways of money in a way where I, I, I could live off with a certain amount and I could still have more to help my parents out. So, if needed. And I've also, like, learned the ways of how to control my emotions regarding, like, topics that used to be so cringing and just bothered me yeah because i mean we we as humans we do have like triggers and there's those topics that are taboo but that do need to be discussed um and that's i think that's the one thing that people are, are, are afraid to discuss about like oh because it's just because it's truthful and it's like it hurts it's hurtful it's like people don't want to talk about it it's like well that's why we are in the situation that we're in today in history is because people don't want to talk about certain things that have happened, whether it be in our country, in our past or in our personal past. Um, like I honestly, like I, I, if someone asked me about like, like, like if I, why I'm, I'm in my situation, I tell them, like, I was like, I'm not going to front. Like if you want to, if you, and they can discern for themselves if they still want to fuck with me, you know? Like you guys, like you, I've told you guys my situation and you discerned for yourselves if you still want to continue uh, being my friends and, uh, uh, you know, 
going down this path with each other and uh, helping each other along the way, which I appreciate both of you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's hard to come by real people these days because everybody is so caught up in the, in the, in the hype that everybody wants the, yeah, everybody wants the clout. Everybody wants the hype. Everybody wants the fame, the money, the, the, and it's, and it, and it's cool if you if you got if you got it you know but you know once you got it like uh, like you say you know spread it around to like the communities that you grew up in and or you know give it back to your fam that that helped you you know in your times of need um, that supported you and you know that's, I I've been doing that too because I my family has been has helped me out immensely through the years and a lot of people look down on that um, they they just because they, they haven't had that blessing um, of having parents that that actually give a damn, you know, or uh, maybe they weren't, didn't give a shit about them growing up or it was tough for them. Not that they didn't give a shit about them growing up, but it was tough for them to show love and emotion to them because they wanted this, their, them to be um, a tough person. They wanted to be, uh, you know, they, they were showing them tough love. Uh, they didn't want them to grow up to be a pussy or something like that. And that's, that's pretty much how like I grew up is like there was a lot of machismo in my, in, in my family, but uh, that's just because I, I grew up in a Mexican family, dude. Like my parents are both Mexicans and I consider myself Mexican. Like there's, uh, even though I was born here in the States, uh, eventually I got my dual citizenship. So yeah, I'm Mexican. I am a Mexican American fool. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, like I just, like I count, really do count my blessings every day um, that I grew up with, with a mom and a dad that cared enough to push me through those hard times and not make me give up, you know? Um, because, and, and I look at it now, I'm being 36 and I'm just like, you know, yeah, there was there was hard times, and uh, I'm, at that time of growing up, I might have like had a, a, this feeling of, of of hate towards my 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 parents or something. But it's you know, in the end, it's it's the like they say, it's that it's that dharmic love, it's that tough love that the, that they want to give you. They they want to give you better, and that's and I think that's what everybody wants for everybody else. You know, like if I want to share my experiences with you because I see you going through a tough time. Um, I'm going to be like, Hey man, you know, I'm going to suggest something. It's like, if I can suggest to you, like you were saying to your, to your friend, like, Hey, you know, if I can suggest to you through my experience, this is what happened. Maybe you should, maybe you should try something else, you know, instead of using force, maybe, maybe, uh, what do I always say? Uh, it's that line from Detroit rock city. Sometimes being tough means being tender. <laughs> What about you, Eric? Um, about what? I don't know. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the one thing that uh, I did like about um, the book, I kind of read something on that uh, Wheel of Life, kind of like, kind of blew my mind a little, and I'll, I'll read it right now. It says, uh, uh, while uh, Hinduism may be different, differ greatly from Christianity in many aspects, one cannot deny the similarities to the statement in John, uh, the beginning was the word of, or the beginning was the word and the word was the God and the word was God. Uh, it's kind of kind of crazy because they were kind of talking about the, uh, the sound of uh, Am, and they were saying that in their religion, there was two gods, um, Brahma and Vikarshi, I'm pretty, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the shit out of the names, uh, and they both uh, collided and became uh, a one entity, and the sound was um that they made, uh, and that's how the universe started, was those two gods colliding each other and then becoming one, and uh, one of the, that's kind of just blew my mind because they kind of went into the Christianity uh, aspect of, uh, of God and the whole life theory. So I don't know, like for me, I kind of love 
diving into like different religions and figuring out the similarities between each other, the little threads of life. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Right now, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm saying God, and if you'd like, God, 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 I don't know, it has that um sound. Ah, uh, yeah, and then, I mean, and think of like, and it's the first thing that you, you like when you come into this world, you take a breath and you're like, <gasps> ah, or you, or they smack your ass and you start crying and you're like, ah. <laughs> either way, um, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of healing power in sound. Uh, I, I definitely believe in in the the power of sound as a healing tool, um, especially in Hinduism. Um, they and then. I've been, I did a lot of research on, um, on just sound healing and people doing types of like creating, uh, sound chambers for themselves. And they just, um, they cured cancer and all this stuff. And I was like, Oh, I can't remember the name of this doctor, but yeah, they, they, this, it was this doctor here in the States. It was, he was a German doctor. And um, they totally had had him discredited because, like, the things that he was doing was 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 so great that the government was like, "Nah, nah, we got to keep you under wraps." And they totally they in the '60s, I think they yeah they just discredited him completely and wrote him off, and he died like three years later. <laughs> I think I heard some. Isn't that the one Nick Cannon said he's gonna write a? make a documentary about something about like uh with the 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 uh, I'm trying to think what it was i'm gonna have to to remember the going back to the whole thing of love um <clears throat> this book uh the thinking girl rich I, I sent you guys a text message that you know i've been fighting the urge uh, of <laughs> sex uh the mastery of the the miss the Mystery of Sex Transmutation. That's the chapter I'm currently on. And mm -hmm. it's been good because, as you can tell, I've been highlighting the shit out of it. <laughs> and this one that I just, like, saw today, I just highlighted this. And I, I'm focused, like, Pink is the, I'm really bringing in Pink into this book. And Pink is focusing more on the love of this chapter. And this one just, like, it hit me. Because, you know, we're, since it is about throat chakra, it is kind of about love and it's about the human heart and, you know, everything. Um, and I sent this to a friend of mine. His mom just passed away. And I, and I wrote, I, I sent him this picture and it says, memories of love never pass. They linger, gu they linger guide, and influence long after the source of sim simulation has faded. There is nothing new in this Every person who has been moved by genuine love knows that it leaves enduring traces upon the human heart. The effect of love endures because love is spiritual. Love is a spiritual spiritual in nature. So, I thought that was I thought that was kind of cool and it also kind of. I think I agree with that um, because. Yeah, I, I read something similar to that where um, when you have a longing for somebody, it's just that you had so much love left over for that person that it's still in your heart. And that's why you have that longing for them, um, even though they're not in your life for whatever specific reason is because you're and and you shouldn't feel bad that you just have you just that just means you have a big heart and you have a shit ton of love to give and you just got to like you say you gotta you gotta channel that 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 love uh somewhere else you know uh into into something and uh transmute it <laughs> if you will yeah. that's what that, that's what i was trying to tell the person today um when i was talking to them that it's not about me trying to upset them but trying to educate them on the forces of this so hopefully it like clicks <laughs> yeah i had to take a step back today too because like <laughs> and it was over something so dumb but it, it's just like i left my sunglasses i had just bought a new pair of sunglasses and um 
They're, uh, they were uh, blue blockers. Blue blockers sent me some sunglasses. Uh, <laughs> and I had just bought them because they were having a sale for like two for 50. And I was like, I'm going to take care of these bitches. They're going to be like my favorite sunglasses. They're gonna, I'm going to take care of them every day when I go on the ramp. Awesome. And left them on top of one of the bag containers. And we were kind of running a little uh, close to, to take off. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking off on the, with, the, with the tug. And uh, as I remember, I'm just like, oh, shit, my sunglasses. I hit the brakes. And I just hear them fly off the container and oh. go underneath the wheel and I'm just like fuck because you know like it's just it sucks when you what's that it's I just had that feeling of like man I paid good money for this and I just destroyed them in less than a week and uh, I text uh, I text my homegirl and uh, she was like she was like aren't you always telling me to keep aware of your surroundings and I, and my ego was just like so flared up and I was like I really don't need a lecture right now. I just want to vent. And uh, they were just like, whoa, you need to check yourself really quick. I'm not lecturing you. Uh, and I was just like, all right, all right. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, that sucks, though. Yeah, it does suck about my sunglasses. Thank you. <laughs> uh. So lesson is the, I'm just going to go to like the dollar store and buy 10 bucks worth of cheapo sunglasses. <laughs> don't, don't take your expensive ones to work. That's what, what I learned. I was like, they're not even, man, I was just so mad. I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take care of these. And I was, I was good about like the first week about putting them in like the case, the little case, the little flimsy case, whatever. But when you're on the go like that, I'm just like, oh, I just forgot. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's my fault. It's my fault. I shouldn't be taking. I'm trying to flex when I shouldn't be flexing. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It's cool, though. But I honestly think um, by telling yourself that, like, I'm going to keep I'm going to take care of them. That, that's when you kind of like, in a way, put in your own head that you, you like, there's that chance that I could forget them. And then you make that chance happen. Because <laughs> honestly, I do that a lot of times before. Like, I would always lock my keys in my truck. And I'm like, all right, this time, uh, I'm not going to forget it. And I was going to a party and I like closed the door and I was like, oh, no, 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 close the door. And doosh, my friend closes the door and I was like, Damn, he's like, what? It's like, I just fucking locked the keys in the truck. <laughs> and I was so mad that I wanted to punch my window, and, like, just to break it and to go in to get my keys. But then I was like, no, no, it was going to cost too much. And then my friend talked me down. And then eventually someone in the uh, in the party, which is my, my girlfriend now, uh, she had triple, she has triple A. And so they were able to open my, my fucking cart. But I was just like, yeah, dude. I was like, and from that point on, I always told myself, check your pockets before you leave. Yeah, man. Keys, wallet, phone. <laughs> That's funny. Um, or whenever you tell yourself, yeah, I'm going to put this here, and I will never forget where it's at. Oh, yeah. And then you forget where it's at. You're like, where the fuck did I put that thing? <laughs> You find it, you find it, you're like, damn, I told myself find I wouldn't be gay. <laughs> like, there's that sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. It's all molded. <laughs> hey, what brother. You're in the VCR. <laughs> Man. Any cool. points, though, for the, the throat chakra, then? Speak the truth is what yeah. I learned. Uh, don't lie. Yeah. Mm. Drink water. So always speak the truth. <laughs> yes. Always. <laughs> Keep hydrated, people. Yeah, stay hydrated. <laughs> um, one thing I, I, I've been trying to do a lot, and like, I, like you mentioned it earlier, Eric, was eat better or just, yeah, foods that are good, I guess. So I've been trying to eat more fruits every day and uh, 
home food, like food that I cook myself, like beans, green beans, potatoes, all that stuff. Potatoes. <laughs> You're a p meat and potatoes kind of guy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, and not like that stuff has made me feel really good. Like I feel, I feel amazing whenever I'm, I don't eat out. Like yesterday and today, I kind of cheated myself. I was like, you know, I haven't had a out food in a while. Um, yesterday I had in and out for the first time in like a long time. Like I told my brother today, I was like, I haven't, I had in and out for the first time since the last time I had it. He's like, what was the last time you had it? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wasn't a long time. <laughs> so, I know what you mean, man. Uh, I was uh, reflecting the other day and I was thinking about like, just the food that, that, that I eat and the stuff that I want to keep putting into my body. And I just thought about it. Like if I eat things that are alive, like fruits and vegetables more than I eat, like things that are dead, like meat, you know, cause I have a cousin whose husband works at in uh, meat packing. And uh, I think I told you guys this, but it's like, by the time the meat gets to your supermarket, that, animal has already been butchered for like two weeks give or take so whereas like produce or is like that's there fresh produce from wherever i don't know it's probably like maybe a couple of weeks old but still has like it still has that live factor to it or even the um, stuff that you can find in like organic um in the organic aisle or uh, the local produce if you can get local produce even better uh, just chow down on local and you get the the energy from something that's alive that's why and, and I, th I thought of this because like i was thinking of like a jaguar in the jungle like eating a gazelle and it's like that thing is alive for you know a while before it finally dies so i was like mm, should i eat more raw meat no it just means i should eat more raw fruits and vegetables <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not gonna turn into a cannibal guys <laughs> i mean i could but not yet not yet not yet yeah we're not we're, we're not, have to... not at that stage in the pandemic yet yeah. wait what i didn't travel into the future and say anything what no speaking into existence i saw nothing <laughs> i saw nothing guys welcome you like you seen that movie <laughs> <laughs> um but Eric or Walsh, you guys want to tell everyone what we're going to be doing from now on for the next section? Because our first, our first part of our podcast and videos are going to be of the chakras and our main topic. For example, today it was just the throat chakra of speaking the truth, speaking out of, with love, and you know, not regretting what you're going to say. Our second part, which will be the second hour of our podcast, will be you guys anyone we got a new segment uh it's a uh, it's a book it's almost like a book club almost i feel like like this like yeah it's gonna be great i love it um eric you want to do you have the book next to you eric do you want to introduce it uh, i actually don't but i saw R R remy does have it i do have it here the yeah Woo! power of habit why we do what we do in life and business. I'm actually excited. I haven't opened it. You guys are like, I think Walter's already like in chapter one. I haven't even touched it. I read a little bit of the prologue. I, I really enjoyed it already. So I'm excited. was pretty good. You've re you've already opened it a little bit, Eric? Uh, honestly, I did dig in a little bit. I didn't go to chapter one. I just read the beginning of it and it just, Pretty much talks about like this uh, this uh, woman can't remember her name and she becomes a, a, a subject for a scientist and she's just a pretty good uh, subject not gonna say too much about it because I don't want to ruin it but <laughs> it, it's pretty cool <laughs> get into the book next week but yeah <laughs> so yeah like if any of the people watching this want to read this with us I guess what we're gonna do we're going to read one chapter each time? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's how we're doing it, right? Yeah, okay. yeah we'll read a chapter uh, a week at a time, and then we'll just discuss it like a, yeah, like a book club. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited, honestly, because I'm, 
when was it during i think during the pen no before before it definitely before it i was telling my aunt and my brother i was like man i really want to be part of a book club so i don't know i'm excited now because this is hey during the, during this time during the pandemic i was telling my homie i was like man i really want to start a podcast and look at us now yeah. look at us now hey look at us <laughs> look at us we're doing it <laughs> we're doing it man <laughs> like uh Oh, the Paul Rudd one is like. Yes, yes. Oh my God! Look at us, man. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> like, Who would have thought? Not me. <laughs> that's the Hot Ones one uh, link, right? That's for Hot Ones. Yeah. I think that's a- yeah. Uh, I love that that YouTube channel, dude. <laughs> that's a good the Gordon Ramsay one. one was freaking hilarious. Oh yeah, I like that one. That was really good. <laughs> Part two. Um, yes. I'm gonna send you a video. It's a uh, Paul Rudd, the the hot ones, but it's Paul Rudd talking to Paul Rudd, and it's really yeah. <laughs> that's what I was. That's exactly what pops into my head, man. Every single time, I'm just like, hey, look at us, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'm really excited about this book, guys. Um, I like, uh, yeah, uh, like Remy said, I dove a little bit, not too much, um, just because like I'm a little bit slow on reading, so I'm gonna have to probably read it a couple times. Uh, but it's it's getting better. I'm actually getting really better at reading. Um, I was, uh, who was it? I think one of y'all sent uh, something where it's like if you read like six minutes a day. Um, something or 30 minutes a day it's something like you it's you start picking up new habits something like that five or six yeah i think that was me on instagram yeah so like i started i've been and honestly like i'm reading three books i'm reading i started reading this one uh i'm like in the middle of reading my my zog chen book and then i'm also reading uh dune for fun because like because they're coming out with that new movie and it's going to be awesome (laughs) <laughs> dune, or dune dune d-u-n-e dune yeah if you haven't read the book uh it's a great uh it's great it's all it's almost like along the same lines of where we're going it's got some philosophy but it's like in in space <laughs> yeah it's really good and uh, they made it into a movie back in the 80s and then they're remaking it again uh it's supposed to come out i think next year or 2022 Something like that. If 2022 even happens. Yeah, we'll see. I think we're just going to delete this year, guys. I think that's what I heard, is that this year is just going to get yeeted and deleted, and we're going to go straight into, like, 2025. <laughs> <laughs> America's good to do that. Imagine Like, you yeah. link at, like, New Year's, and you're counting down from 2019. It's like, 10, 9, 8. Happy 2020. Like, Wait, what? I've been what? here before. <laughs> did, did I just... Is this part of the simulation? What? <laughs> and that, that, I literally felt the chills right now when I said I was like, that, that was kind of scary. Oh, man. Yeah. No, I wake up every day and I'm just like, am I still in 2020? Like, is the pandemic over? <laughs> And then I look at my ankle, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> nope, still here. Still 2020. Still here. Damn it. So, for as far as the book goes, guys, um, I feel like I'd like, we, I get, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's getting too excited. <laughs> <laughs> we like go off topic and then I bring it back and then we go off topic and get I don't know. That's what I love about this show, man. It's like we're just a bunch of dudes talking. And it was like so anyway, back to the book. <laughs> um, are you guys gonna be taking notes? Cause like what I like to do when I'm reading is always highlight like things that stick out to me. And I've been using like three highlighters for for things, formulas, quotes, and like keywords. I don't know how you guys were like 
go about it. I mean, I, I, that's the way I do, and that's the way I learn. I feel when I'm that's reading. That's cool. I like that. Like formulas is something that you like. It says, and you apply it, and you practice it to your life. Yes. Quotes, obviously, just quotes. Like anything they quote, like they could quote Pineapple Express, "Safety first, man. Wear shoes." You know. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny that shit just happened to me not too long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Up my toe, and I was like, oh, should have been wearing shoes. <laughs> should have been wearing shoes, damn it. <laughs> Ow, I stubbed my toe. Oh, you okay, man? Oh, you gotta wear shoes in the house. Safety first. <laughs> I love that movie. Safety, I like it. He goes, he goes safety first, then teamwork. <laughs> Uh, I might have to watch that movie again. And uh, yeah, so that's green is quotes, orange is formulas, like practice it, and then yellow or pink are key words that stick out to me. Or even words that I don't know and then I look them up. Mm, I like to do that. Um, what's the word that I was wanting to use today and I didn't get a chance? Oh, reticent. Yeah, when somebody is reticent to express themselves. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? It just means they're reluctant to like reveal certain truths about them, you know. Like, um, yeah. What's the way that they used it? Hold on, I wrote it down somewhere. So like, they they have. There's actually a, a part of that in my book that talks about reticence. So is it like lying in a way? No, it's just like you're kind of like not revealing the full truth you're just um because you're 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 kind of weary of of your sur of your surroundings so you're not so you're not really like revealing the full truth um is, is that's what i'm assuming but i'm gonna go back to my notes really quick uh, um, yeah i read a said not revealing one's thoughts or feelings readily so yeah so you're not like in a position to really give your 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 two cents, you're just kind of like, uh, maybe. And uh, so it's like, uh, was it from Latin, remaining silent, uh, re-expressing uh, intensive force and tarse to be silent. So yeah, reticent. Not revealing one's thoughts or feelings readily. You know. One of the things that really helped me with public speaking was working at the airport. And uh, I feel like that's where I gained more confidence in, like, just telling the truth. Because uh, you know how you, I, I used to have to do, like, the announcements to people. I was like, hey, man, so, you know, your, board, your plane's going to start boarding. I put more emotion, obviously, to it, not just like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was going to say, what is that, Stoner Airlines? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you're boarding. Yeah, man. Lane's here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your complimentary guayaba juice. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. We, oh, we could start. We can start it. You got ten million dollars. Let's start an airline. <laughs> Not yet. Stoner Airlines. Stoner Airlines, and we'll get uh, if Snoop Dogg is still around, we can be. He can be our spokesmodel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. His name is Snoop Lion now. I think I think he's still Snoop Dogg or not. He's still Snoop Dogg to me. I don't care. Yeah, he's still Snoop Dogg think, to me. He's still Snoop Dogg. <laughs> I, I think he rechanged his name back. No, to no, he smoked so much weed he became Snoop Lion. Oh, uh, is it still that then? Because I remember when no, he no. changed. <laughs> no, it's still Snoop Dogg. He just said he just uh, said Snoop Lion because he made his uh, reggae album. Uh, and that's pretty much Actually, what he called himself was uh, Snoop Lion. So he's Snoop Lion when he does regular, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. He was just lying. On the persona of Snoop Lion for he reggae. He's just lying, he said. He's a liar. He's just lying, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. So, uh, but. I want. I guess I, I want another thing. I'm asking about for the throat chakra. 
jokes. How about that? Like, is that, is that like laughter? You said laughter is a good one, right? So like jokes as well then? Like, yeah, well, as long as it's bringing you that, uh, that positive, yeah, that enjoyment, that, that jokes would be good too, you know? As I guess, just said, pretty much be around people that'll make you laugh. Uh, as long as the joke is not at someone's expense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then karma will get you for that. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, damn it. Oh, I just owed myself for another one. Chalk it up to the game. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something right now, but no. Um, <laughs> um, See? It went through that gate. <laughs> it went through that gate, man. Yeah. You know what I'll ask right now, but I'm not going to say it, okay? <laughs> Don't say it to me. Don't say it. Say it to my face, puto. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, I think that's another thing, too, is that, like, I, I read something the other day. Is like, if you can't say something to somebody in in private or, like, in, in, in person with them and you're just talking about them to another person, like, kind of gossiping, then that's not really – you're just kind of, like you're, – you're not really being – truthful with neither the person that you're talking about or yourself because you're not confronting that you're not you're not expressing yourself through that or with whatever conflict that is there you're not expressing yourself through that through that with that other person you're expressing your grief through that with somebody else and then like maybe they'll tell that person and they're gonna only get like half the fucking story you know because they always say, they always say, there's, there's, there's always uh, uh, your side, their side, and the truth. So it's all, and it's always gonna get mixed up in between, you know. Yeah. So you're expressing your, you're expressing from person A to an escape goat instead of because you're person yeah. B, person A, you're expressing to C who is the escape goat. So you're. Yeah. Okay. I see that. So yeah. So you just and then just kind of be careful. Like also, yeah. Just be careful. Like what you say to people too, because you never know. We could kind of relate that to episode two of the podcast where I was talking about masturbation and sex, um, where where I was talking about where with sex. If you have sex with a lot of people, you just like your, your energy just gets mixed up and it just fucks your system up. Um, and then when you masturbate, it's kind of like cheating yourself from receiving energy, but you're giving out energy. So I guess what I'm kind of seeing here is C is because if you were talking to the person that you were having troubles with, you're getting and receiving the energy and the tension that you could fix the solution. So instead of, instead that person is talking to another person and you, and that energy is just going away and then you kind of just feel cheated. I don't know. I think I'm like, messed up. <laughs> no, I, know what you mean. I, 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 com- I completely understand what you mean. But yeah, because you're, you're basically cheating yourself out of, of having an actual experience with somebody, you know? Actually connecting. Exactly. With, um... It's about love. It's about connection, man. And there's no connection in Jurgen. <laughs> yeah, and like, I mean, it's not wrong if you do jerk off them because, like, sometimes you got you, you do have to release some pressure. Uh, I found myself like to. Uh, I remember I, at the beginning of of COVID, I was like, I was so adamant. I was like, I'm not gonna masturbate. I'm gonna be just live the monastic life, you know. <laughs> And uh, and just go through this because I'm not because I already said I was like oh, I'm not drinking so I might as well just like give up everything and it wasn't in a sense of like giving up it was more like restricting myself and that like even hurt more it was just like that I had to restrict myself and then my buddy came up with uh, another concept of just it's not restriction it's uh, oh man what's the R word I'm looking for it's um, reinforcement. No, it's, um, you're, um, renouncing. So I just like renounced it for, you know, renouncement of, of, uh, giving myself carnal pleasure. Um, because, but, 
and renouncement it doesn't mean like i'm just giving it up forever it just means like you know what? i'm gonna give it up for a while and see what happens you know and and i think with, with my experience of renouncing masturbation it it helped me rediscover who i really was um deep deep inside and then when i was able to express myself physically with somebody or with uh with myself you know i could really truly experience what i was trying to release or even share with either myself or with uh that other person and um same for communicating too right yeah definitely it's 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 a it's i was and i mean it could it could be i use it as a form of tantra like meditation um where i wouldn't i i, I would go into these these uh, meditative states um with and i was sexually charged but i wouldn't really like release you know i didn't have any release and then i would i would i would basically charge myself up until like i did have i did want to have a, a sexual experience with uh with either myself or someone you know And just kind of channeling it into something else, either through meditation and then going and doing something else with it, you know, and uh, redirecting that flow of, of sexual energy into um, a flow of, uh, you know, loving awareness or something like that, you know? I, I try to draw whenever. I'm like trying to fight that. I sit down and draw. You, and you just sit down and draw a bunch of vaginas, don't you? I've done that. I've I've totally done that before, man. Like I literally did that one one day. I was just I sat down and I just drew, drew, like, like, a vaginas. No, I'm serious. It's like, it was therapeutic. It was, it was for medicinal purposes, okay? Medicinal. <laughs> really, well, I did draw this one time, and I was talking about that, and he's like, "Well, you do have to learn how to draw everything." Yeah, you draw some nudes? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you gotta be able to draw. <laughs> is that is that a self portrait, Remy? Yeah, I <laughs> the <laughs> You were pulling a goodbye horses. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, this is one of the oh it's supposed to be Heath Ledger. Yeah, it's dude. That's good. I need to start drawing again, man. That's the one thing I was telling myself the other day. I was like, man, you should really start drawing again. Uh, I started picking up the guitar at the beginning of, uh, of COVID um, just so I could teach myself some new things. And I started learning a couple new tunes, but I haven't learned anything since. Uh, my goal was to just learn at least like six to eight songs and have like a set ready for like after after covid was done and just hit the hit the the strip somewhere and like find an open mic and just play a couple tunes and get paid you know <laughs> just for fun yeah. but well, now I'm, that's like, a good goal. I'm not gonna have it anymore <laughs> i'm just gonna play it for myself and i ended up just yeah just picking up tunes that i like well you and, uh, you don't have to play for yourself. You go play for us and everyone that's watching. Oh, that's oh. true. Maybe one day we'll, I'll have a segment of uh, just one one song, one song a week. We'll teach you how to play one song, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That'd be fun. I'm down with that. I, I'm down with it. I'm going to teach you guys how to play guitar. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that because I actually, it ran through my mind when I got to the bookstore. I was like, guitar. I was like, next month, I'll buy a guitar. <laughs> yeah let me know when you go man uh i was thinking about going to like uh I, I i unfortunately don't have a guitar i was uh blessed with a guitar from my, my buddy roland perales um <laughs> so he's uh yeah because he's he was like yeah i'm not using it right now he's he's working with a bunch of uh um electronic music right now so he was like yeah i'm, I'm not using the acoustic so if you want to um you can just jam out on it. I was like, all right, well, just let me know whenever you want it back. You know, I'm not going to keep it forever. Yeah. <laughs> nice guitar. <laughs> it's, 
it's a an Oscar Schmidt, but it sounds beautiful. Like I've I've never heard of this this, but it's it's beautifully crafted, and it sounds great for the country licks that I play and a couple of whatever acoustic tunes that I've learned. I'm a, I'm a learn. That's You're a I'm learner. Learning. You are a learner. I am. But my brain's a sponge. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, that's that's <laughs> that's why I started saying uh, knowledge rules everything around me, man. Because honestly, like if I kn- if I feel like I have a little bit of knowledge of something, then it's it's gonna trickle it's gonna trickle down, man. That I'm gonna want to I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna want to learn something else. Like what was it like? I started, oh, like, uh, I started doing yoga again, and now, like, I'm honestly thinking about, like, becoming a yoga instructor. I don't know. I thought, I just thought myself as, like, I'm, yeah. like, YouTube, everything. That's why I'm a, I, I'm a, uh, I want to start YouTubing me cooking. So, oh, I think I make some pretty good dishes every now and then. Yeah. Eric's going to be making music. Yeah. I just got to get myself into doing it, dude. I keep, like, throwing excuses or not to do it. Yeah. yeah there's, there's always a million and one reasons not to do something, man. You just got to find that one reason to do it. I'm going to need music for my gaming videos, Eric. November, starting November. That's that's what keeps uh, taking my uh, my time, man. Gaming. <laughs> Are you gonna- the PlayStation or the Xbox? Is that what you're waiting for in November? Uh, no, not really. I'm not gonna even attempt myself to buy that shit. I'm gonna yeah. wait until like the whole hype is over and then get it. I'm gonna be getting that PlayStation Four again, probably. Dude, I went back. To, I reverted, man. I went to my 360, my old school oh. console, my R2D2 <laughs> Xbox 360. So it talks to me when I when I turn it on. <laughs> I love the art. I love the art. 360 was fun. Dude, for me, the game that I loved a lot for the 360, well, it was on PlayStation 2 as well, for 3, um, was uh, Dead Space. Oh, that was awesome. Dead Space was fun. The Those jump scares were amazing. I love for Xbox 360, and it, it just blew my mind away when I first played them. Or... Um, Gears of War. Oh yeah, and then they started dropping like all the different consoles every time they they made a new Gears. I remember one of my homies has like that all red Gears of War uh, with like black and with the black gear and the skull. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. And when you start it up, it's like the sound of like the when you the grunt or something like that. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Gears of War Two was like the best. Yeah, what, Gears good. What is it, like, Santos or Santiago, his wife? That one, I was like, oh, shit. And then they all die. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing that they die. I was just, I remember when that all that shit went down, I was just like, what? No, he's so sad. <laughs> that shit was amazing. Yeah. I, that's the only reason I'd get an Xbox is to play Gears and Halo, of course. Tough. <laughs> yeah. But I think, guys, this ends our party. I think so. Um, I don't have anything else to add other than uh, if you guys want to go get the book and start catching up with us. It's uh, The Power of Habit uh, by Charles Duhigg or Duhigg or Doug. Doohig. I say Doohig. Doohig, yeah. I say Doohig. But yeah, it's really good. So far, what I've read, it's uh, enlightening. I'm, uh, Very interesting. Yeah, I'm going to probably start reading it tomorrow. I'm free. It's my day off, so. I might get a second job, too, so. Nice. Go work at Amazon. No, he's going to be drawing naked people. Oh, that's right. Draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> yeah, over here. I'll, I'll draw you like Rose and Jack. 
Yeah. Although no, you're gonna have to come over here, bro. <laughs> I have the perfect cap. I have the perfect cap too. Oh, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> or ending that. <it>. Bye. <laughs>